This build gives you infinite grenades? Yes. In Season 21, we have brand new artifact mods that turn this arc build from okay to absolutely meta. I mean, dude, look at me literally just spam grenades. It doesn't stop. Now, on top of infinite grenades, we also casually have infinite damage resist, making this arc build surprisingly tanky. I am so excited to show you guys this build because the output is truly insane. What's good, guys? It's Zen, and if you know me, you know I'm not going to waste your time with these videos. So after I describe the build, I am going to show you how good it truly is by running a Lost Sector while 20 levels under power. And now that you're hyped, let's hop right into the build. There is so much going on here, so be sure to pay attention so you don't miss a single step. So first, we'll start with our exotic of choice, Shinobu's Vow. This exotic gives skip grenades better tracking, pretty much guaranteeing you will get full damage off on them. It also gives you a second charge on your skip grenade, which is always nice. However, the key to this exotic is the second part, which reads, skip grenades return energy when it damages enemies. And this grenade recharge is no joke. It gives 50% cooldown back if all the skip grenade projectiles land, which pretty much always happens. Now this is just the beginning of the madness. We have so many more things combining to give us those infinite grenades. So first, let's hop into our subclass where the magic begins. Now first, we have the Fragment Spark of Shock. This makes our grenades jolt targets, giving us some free damage, which is always great. This jolt is the beginning of our synergy. Spark of Ions takes advantage of it by giving us an Ionic Trace when defeating jolted targets. Ionic Traces give us 18% of our ability cooldown back, which plays greatly into our infinite grenade spam. Next, we have Spark of Recharge. This gives us increased grenade energy when we get low HP. In end game content, this happens quite often. As you can see, this grenade recharge is by no means small. I'll save the last fragment for later. Let's talk about our aspects of choice. Now first we have flow state, which will introduce us to the concept of amplify. Flow state makes us amplified for defeating jolted targets. Now if you remember from earlier, that means anything we hit with our grenades will make us amplified. Being amplified provides many benefits. At base, it gives us some crazy speed, but with flow state, it also gives us much faster dodge cooldown and also gives us huge damage resist for our dodge animation and greatly increased reload speed. Now for the next aspect, I do recommend Tempest Strike for endgame activities. This gives you a nice ranged uppercut attack that also jolts targets helping with our gameplay loop. Now many people will suggest Tempest Strike is throwing and that lethal current with combination blow is the entire point of Arc Hunter. However, to be frank, a melee build is not something you'd really want to run in a Grandmaster Nightfall with. You could definitely do it, but you'll die a lot with such a reckless playstyle. Now since that was a lot of info, Let's sum up what we have so far before we continue. Shinobu's Vow gives us two charges of our skip grenades and gives us 50% cooldown back when we use those grenades. These skip grenades jolt targets, which makes us amplified when we kill them and creates ionic traces. Ionic Traces gives us 18% of our grenade cooldown back, being amplified makes us faster, and helps our dodge come back faster too. Our last fragment choice will be Spark of Beacons, which makes our arc special weapons create a blinding explosion while amplified. This explosion isn't small by any means, and gives us a secondary form of ad clear, while also stunning unstoppable champions. And that is a great segue to discuss our weapons. Our exotic weapon of choice is Cold Heart. This gun just does some crazy damage, and in Season 21, also stuns overload champions. With Spark of Beacons, it also stuns unstoppables if there are adds nearby to create that blinding explosion. The best part about it though is the fact that it creates ionic traces while in its heavy damage mode, giving us even more grenade cooldown. If you don't know, Cold Heart does more damage the longer it remains on a target. After shooting long enough, it'll create those ionic traces for us. Now moving on, I recommend any machine gun with Demolitionist. This perk gives you 10% grenade cooldown back for kills. Now I am fortunate enough to own Chain of Command, which turns my machine gun into arc when I throw my grenade with osmosis. This is excellent since there's an arc surge lasting all season, boosting all arc damage by 25%. If you don't have this gun, that's totally fine, because any demolitionist machine gun will give you the same grenade spamming capabilities as me. Now your primary gun doesn't matter at all, so run whatever you need for champions. The synergy has just begun. The artifact mods this seasons make us crazy powerful, so let's discuss. First of all, you'll of course need overload trace rifles to make our cold heart stun overload champions. And now we're on to the good stuff. Electric armor makes our amplified last 20 20 seconds instead of 15. Now this doesn't sound like a lot, but it's a major deal due to all the benefits being amplified gives us. Speaking of which, here's three new benefits. Thunderous Retort gives us an insane 30% damage bonus to our arc super damage 
when we are amplified. Also, Amped Up casually gives us 25% damage resist while amplified. This does stack with the 30 damage resist from 100 resilience. Keep in mind, we are literally always amplified, so these are so free. Next, we have Shock and Awe. This creates lightning strikes that jolt targets when we get arc kills while amplified. This can be grenade kills or arc weapon kills. This perk is just the cherry on top. You never really go for this, but it happens all the time just free damage for playing the game normally. The best part is that it jolts targets, which will then create ionic traces for us and make us amplified even more for kills. Finally, we have lightning strikes twice. This mod truly makes us have infinite grenades, since when we throw a grenade, we get 150% increased grenade cooldown while the buff is active. The best part is we can extend this buff by getting additional arc kills with our grenade or cold heart. Truly insane stuff. Now with our subclass, weapons, and artifact perks discussed, we are almost at peak power. However, we have mods that make us even stronger, and a few more things in our subclass to discuss. After that, I will explain one final time every tool in your arsenal so you are using this build to its maximum potential. Then I'll show you live how well this build truly shines by running it in a lost sector while 20 levels under power. Now first we have our helmet. These mods are pretty standard, we'll take special and heavy ammo finder to help with our ammo economy, and harmonic siphon to create orbs of power with arc weapons. Now for our arms, we'll use firepower to create orbs of power for grenade kills, as well as two grenade kickstart mods to give us even more grenade uptime than we already have. For your chest, you'll just want whatever resist mods will help with the activity you're about to run. For legs, we'll use arc scavenger to help with cold heart ammo economy, and two innervation mods, which gives us even better grenade uptime. Finally, for your class mods, slot on three bomber mods again for even more grenade uptime when dodging. Now jumping back into our subclass, we have three final things to discuss. Our super of choice will be Gathering Storm. This super does ridiculous single target damage when you land it on a boss, and you'll see what I mean when I show you how good the build is in our Lost Sector run. In addition, it is widely known that running a roaming super in endgame PvE is kind of tossing in the current sandbox. Marksman Dodge is our dodge of choice since it gives you a faster dodge cooldown than gamblers. Additionally, we are not really using the standard arc melee build, so we won't need our melee much up at all from Gambler's Dodge. Finally, we are using Disorienting Blow over Combination Blow, again because we are not going to be meleeing much. The benefit of Disorienting Blow is that it blinds, so if you are snuck up on by an unstoppable champion, you can stun it to potentially save you from death. This will also blind any other add, so it's a nice get out of jail free card. Now we have finally mentioned every tool in our kit. Let's sum it up so you truly understand everything this build does. Basically, you just throw your grenade infinitely, and that's about it. Alright, let's hop into the Lost Sector run. JK. Now first of all, you have two grenade charges. When you throw your grenade, you get free cooldown back from Grenade Kickstart. Also, when the grenade does damage, it gives you an additional 50% of its cooldown back. Next, your grenade jolts enemies, making you amplified and creating an Ionic Trace. The Ionic Trace gives you 18% grenade cooldown back. Your grenade kills also give you orbs of power which give you even more grenade cooldown back. On top of that, when we throw a grenade, we get 150% increased grenade cooldown for a short duration, but additional arc kills, including the grenade we just threw, adds on 3 seconds to this faster grenade cooldown. Now remember, our grenade kills also make us amplified. Being amplified gives us 25% damage reduction. It also makes it so arc kills create lightning strikes, jolting more targets and just giving us some free damage. Amplify also gives us 30% increased super damage, and gives us a powerful damage resistant dodge. This dodge also gives us grenade cooldown. We also get this nice funny slide melee, which is pretty cool. Finally, while amplified, we get blinding explosions from kills with cold heart, giving us even more crowd control. Also, our machine gun kills give us even more grenade cooldown. Oh yeah, and if we get snuck up on somehow, our melee blinds things, giving us a free out. If we actually manage to get low HP, we also get a ridiculous grenade cooldown from Spark of Recharge. There's so much going on here, so if you have any questions, feel free to drop them down below. Now let's put the build to the test by running it in a lost sector while 20 levels under power. All right, so jumping right in, the first thing we're gonna do, very fitting, is we're gonna throw our grenade. Now as you can see, it just turned into an arc machine gun. Now do you see how I already have my grenade back? I just threw a damn grenade and I have all of my grenade back. That is ridiculous. We're gonna throw a grenade again which turns our machine gun again into arc and that is gonna give us that 25% damage bonus from the arc surge lasting all season. That is another thing powering up this build. The fact that we get a free 25% damage bonus on all of our arc damage. These grenades are just so lethal, guys. So we're going to take care of that champion, and we're going to throw our grenade again at this group of adds. How many grenades is that so far? That's like, what, like 
four, five. Now that is not even the peak of the spam. We are gonna start spamming these like crazy later. So we're just gonna dodge that little screed there. We're gonna stun that unstoppable, pull our machine gun out and throw our grenade at that group of vets. That's gonna turn our machine gun into arc. Here's an ionic trace giving us even more cooldown back. We just threw a grenade and it's already back. We're gonna throw another grenade and it's already back, man. I, <laughs> What is going on here? We're going to jump back because we don't want to get hit by that lightning damage. Now, we haven't seen the lightning strikes yet, but they will happen. Again, it's not really something we go for. It just kind of happens. going to throw a grenade back. And look, it, it's already back, man. It's already back. You see the stat boost on the left side. That is giving us that increased grenade cooldown from the artifact mod. We're going to throw another grenade, and it's already half back. I, <laughs> This is absolutely ridiculous. So we're going to take care of this sniper in the back left. Boom, he's dead. Now we're gonna proceed forward. Look, we what did we throw a grenade? Like 10 seconds ago? It's already 90% charge. Gonna stun this overload champion with our trace rifle. Keep in mind, we are 20 levels under power, guys. We are just steamrolling this lost sector. Now, my fastest clear of this lost sector prior to making this build was six minutes. 20 levels under power. I'm not speed running this by any means. I just do these casually so that I can give tips on Lost Sector guides, you know? I, I just want to have a good pace where I can give commentary. I'm not trying to speed run at all. Now, we just wasted our grenade because I thought a group of ads was going to spawn there. Typically, they do. Now, an Ionic Trace is trying to chase us, but we are just ahead of the curve here. We are just sprinting with our nice Amplify. Just threw a grenade. We already have a charge. Going to throw our grenade again after stunning the unstoppable champion we're gonna switch to our machine gun because it's getting that arc damage there's a bunch of screams on top of us but we're gonna throw some grenades we we just have so many damn grenades man look we're gonna throw another gr after we stun this champion we're gonna pull out our machine gun throw another grenade look we already have another grenade charge what is going on you just saw the lightning strike i think that's happened multiple times but you don't really notice it that much it just kind of happens how do we have two grenades charged we just threw a grenade and it's already broke it's 70 percent charge what is going on dude holy crap so now we have fully cleared out this beginning section now you see we're only three minutes deep and we're already in the boss room now this is not the fastest clear of all time by any means but i just want to show you how much this build is absolutely frying i am beating my personal best by a crazy margin here now we're gonna start just you know ionic tracing what we're gonna start cold harding those guys we're gonna try to throw our grenade here in a second uh please throw your grenade please throw your grenade Okay, we got the machine gun out. Uh, I'm not throwing my grenade. Okay, there's the grenade. There's the grenade. <laughs> now, that is going to actually stun the unstoppable, the overload, rather, champion, because overload champions get stunned by Jolt, which is a nice added on bonus, even though we don't really need it because we have the, you know, the trace rifle ammo. It's just nice to have that as an option. And he is absolutely fried. You see the lightning strike going on there, and we have two grenades charged. I really wish, you know, why am I not throwing my grenade here? Look, there's another lightning strike. Okay, there's the nade. There's the, we're throwing two nades. We don't even care anymore. We're just seeing... Look, we just threw two nades, and we already have one back and one's half charge. What is going on, dude? We're going to get some machine gun kills. That is giving us that demolitionist uh, M uh, grenade cooldown. Now the boss is here, and... I'm going to show you how much damage this super does. We're going to land a direct hit and watch this boss's HP, dude. Look at this boss's HP. I, spoiler alert, it completely kills him. It completely kills him, okay? Now, I, I, if that doesn't show you that this build is good, I don't know what will. My fastest clear was 6 minutes. We just did it in 4 minutes and 30 seconds. That is so much faster. I really hope you guys have fun with this build, as it is easily my favorite hunter build this season. Now, I have this goal of hitting 10,000 subscribers by the end of the summer, so if you found any value in this video, a subscribe would be super appreciated. I post Destiny 2 videos daily. Either way, appreciate you watching, and I'll see you tomorrow for the next video. Peace.